I want a boy to get whatever I want I have to get. This contract went back to bad boy. They sweeped that up on the rug. I was with Big the day before when he was reviewing his contract. Stood up over me so I could see how big he was. And he said to me, really, I can just dig it. When he's pointing out the publisher, she's doing the same shit to the young boys now. The recent allegations about Diddy have brought even more exposure to the murky underbelly of the music industry, which has long been known to be competitive and deceptive. The billionaire has been accused by a growing number of people of exploiting and manipulating his artists. It has been claimed that Diddy coerced Biggie into signing a sex contract, adding to the claims of sexual exploitation and financial manipulation. Even if we don't know what's in the contract for sure, just the concept is horrifying. The music industry has been accused of shady dealings before, unfortunately. In a recent video, Dave Chappelle spoke about how the entertainment industry takes advantage of musicians by using legalese in their contracts. He claimed that the contracts are deliberately worded, making it difficult for musicians to know what they are giving up when they sign. To use your name and likeness and perpetuity throughout the universe, who the f could possibly know? What that means. It's especially worrisome because many of these musicians are still young and inexperienced and therefore know little about the business. Dave claims that many business newcomers sign one of these shady agreements. This is because many promising young artists are easily duped by the promises of established figures in the industry since they need financial stability and an escape from their current circumstances. And I signed the contract the way that a 28 year old expecting father that was broke signs a contract. I was desperate. I needed a way out. Many famous people have also commented on Biggie's predicament. The late DMX was a famous person who was mentioned here. In an old interview, DMX talked about his heartbreaking experience with Biggie Smalls. DMX claims that Biggie told him about the time he was sexually assaulted by Sean Puffy Coates, later renamed Puff Daddy, while they were both teenagers. This news was a bombshell that only contributed to the controversy surrounding Puff Daddy's reputation. But DMX stuck to his guns and kept putting out music that resonated with his listeners. But my jaw was still wired shut. This is when you got signed. I heard, I heard about, about the story. story. This is when he knew he was signing. Okay. My jaw was wired shut. Before the release of his 2012 album Undisputed, DMX said in an interview that he had almost signed with Bad Boy Entertainment but ultimately lost out to the locks. This goes to show that even the most successful people have to deal with criticism and failure at some point in their careers. DMX admitted that the Locks was a safer group and was signed by Puff Daddy, who helped them become successful. Puff Daddy believed DMX's gruff voice made him unmarketable, therefore he didn't give him the same chance. DMX speculated that Puff Daddy's reputation for being attracted to guys was why his label chose not to sign him. DMX went so far as to say that after forcing the Locks to compose songs for him, Puff Daddy stole their publishing and abused them. This is a sharp reminder that the music industry is not always easy or kind and that musicians are often used for financial gain. Meanwhile, things turned sour when allegations of sexual abuse against Biggie by Sean Puffy Combs were made public. There may be some truth to these frightening charges, as several people close to the two musicians have come out with similar claims. It's a terrible reminder that harassment and abuse can happen even in the glamorous world of show business. Former bad boy singer Mace has released a blistering new song called Oracle 2, Standing on Bodies, in which he blasts Diddy for his terrible treatment of Biggie before and after Biggie's tragic murder. He also brings up the 1991 City College incident, where nine people were killed at a basketball game that Diddy sponsored. Mace obviously has resentment toward his old work partner. However, the most disturbing allegation is that Mace claims Diddy used the children of the late notorious B.I.G. I'm not hating on your Billy Worth. Right now, I'm only saying what you really work. You ain't no architect. You just a nigga who know how to market death. He raps. On March 9, 1997, the devastating news of the death of hip-hop legend Biggie Small shook the music industry to its core. The rapper was killed in a drive-by shooting in Los Angeles at the peak of his popularity and soon before the release of his album Life After Death. Biggie's longtime pal and label partner, Mace, has been at odds with Sean Diddy Combs in recent years. In 2020, Mace posted to Instagram about what he claimed were Diddy's unethical and dishonest business dealings. The allegations were brought back into the spotlight after Diddy's passionate address at Clive Davis's pre-Grammy dinner, where he promised his support for artists. Mace also said that despite Diddy's smearing of his name, he was still required to put on a happy face for the sake of his fans. DMX has also voiced his displeasure with Diddy's treatment of Biggie, and this is in line with his views. DMX alleged that Diddy mistreated his inner circle behind closed doors while yet expecting them to act happy and loyal in front of the public. Meanwhile, 50 Cent is another prominent figure in the industry who has accused Diddy of exploiting his singer sexually and financially. In particular, he claims that the mogul financially and sexually exploits his artists. 
50 Cent has high admiration for many artists, but the way Biggie was treated is likely to have hurt him the most. Continuing the discussion, 50 Cent has claimed that Diddy's demand for $2 million blocked Mace from leaving his bad boy deal in 2005 to sign with G-Unit Records, despite the fact that 50 Cent was willing to pay only $1 million. Mace was given a one-year release from his contract in 2009 after he disrupted Diddy's interview with Atlanta's B-103 radio station. When Diddy signed Mace's contract, he did so in front of the camera. Nonetheless, Mace's battles with Bad Boy continue. Even though he left the label for good in 2012, the musician is currently engaged in a legal battle with Diddy over the recovery of his publishing rights. Mace alleges he just offered Diddy $2 million to buy back his publishing. But Diddy declined, demanding that Mace match the offer made by a European bidder. Unfortunately, Mace isn't alone in wishing he hadn't signed with Bad Boy. Even Biggie's mother admits that her son was too young to comprehend the exploitation he was experiencing at the hands of Diddy. Jadakiss, Styles P, and Sheik Louch of The Locks started the Free The Locks movement in 1999 to break free of their Bad Boy contract. The three artists wanted to join with DMX's Rough Riders label because they felt that Diddy was putting financial success ahead of authenticity. You know, I did one album with Mace. One album. How much money do you think I owe this guy? One album? And then he became a fake pastor? But even when Diddy dismissed them from their contract, he still controlled their career since he owned 50% of their song publishing. During a heated disagreement on Hot 97 in 2005, Styles accused Diddy of unfairly holding half of their publishing company. Diddy has obviously been utilizing his musicians for shady financial and sexual gain. One of his fans said, he needs to learn some manners. Biggie was a flawless storyteller. I'll give him that. His stories were believable, but he was a controlled product via Diddy. While another fan reacted, my dad just said Diddy was gay and Biggie wasn't down that way. So that's why he killed him. Scary as it is, Diddy continued to exploit new musicians even after Biggie's death. In fact, the hip-hop entrepreneur has opted to work with even younger performers. It seems like Diddy acted the same toward a younger version of Usher. At the tender age of 14, Usher enrolled in a program called Puffy's Flavor Camp. Usher said Diddy showed him the adult world and let him see some crazy stuff at his residence and interview with Rolling Stone in 2004. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. Puff introduced me to a totally different set of ish. Sex, specifically. Sex is so hot in the industry, man. There were all these girls around. You'd open a door and see somebody doing it or several people in a room having an orgy. You never knew what was going to happen. On the Howard Stern Show, Usher also revealed some juicy details about his visit to Diddy's pad. The experience of living with Puff Daddy for a year when he was 14 taught him the true meaning of fame. He said in a 2016 interview with Howard Stern, I got a chance to see some things. I went there to see the lifestyle, and I saw it, Usher said during his first Stern Show interview. Meanwhile, Diddy admitted to Kevin Hart in a recently released interview that he and Usher shared a bed when Usher was only 10 years old, and Diddy was 19. This is my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause, but like, check out. I mean, I mean, back in the days when he was like 10 and I was a little bit older, his older brother, we used to fight over the... The current charges against Diddy only serve to further highlight the music industry's lengthy history of exploitation and deception. More and more musicians are speaking out about their experiences, and it's becoming evident that the music business needs to adapt. Until then, it is the responsibility of individual artists to guard against the predatory actions of those in authority. And that's it from us today. Until next time, bye!